Hmm. Obviously, with this situation, I could talk about. Obviously, with this situation, you could talk about all four regions of, of Greater Kurdistan. For the purposes of this talk, I'm going to just focus on northern Syria, or what would be seen as western Kurdistan, or Rojava, as it's commonly referred to. Um, I think the story of the occupation of Efrin actually begins in 2014. And it occurs when the Turkish government and the Erdogan regime realized, I believe, that they could utilize ISIS or Daesh, but I'll refer to them as ISIS in this talk, as a proxy force, primarily against the Kurdish uh, forces in Rojava. This was something that I witnessed personally with, with my own eyes. In September and October of 2014, I was on the border of Turkey and outside of Kobani, and I watched uh, for eight straight days as wave after wave of ISIS forces were attacking Kobani. During this time, there was roughly about 50 Turkish tanks aligned along the border just staring at the ISIS fighters, doing nothing, not shooting at them. You know, uh, and in fact, what we observed at this time was the Turkish government assisting ISIS fighters. Every night we would watch the wounded ISIS fighters be driven across in ambulances. Um, weapons would, would cross the border. In fact, it became so common in the, you know, the media that it was called the Jihadi Highway, which is a lot of fighters would fly in from the Central Asian Republics, um, the, you know, supported by the Turkish government, and they were basically you know, flying into Istanbul and then going to Gaziantep and then being um, ushered across the border by you know, Turkish MIT, Turkish intelligence. The claims by the Turkish government when they invaded Efrin and the two times that they've invaded Syria or Rojava is that they've been fighting terrorism. But all you have to do is look at the situation to see how false this claim really is. All you have to do is look at the fact that when ISIS controlled the city of Tel Aviv, the Turkish government was fine with that. Right now, uh, Hayat Tayyar uh, al-Sham, or HTS, controls large portions of Idlib. The Turkish government is fine with that. In fact, the U.S. envoy, Brett McGurk, recently, uh, even, you know, recently left his position, even commented about how all of the border crossings in Idlib with Turkey are controlled by essentially Al-Qaeda. And I think that's because the Turkish government has realized that they can utilize al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda, Daesh or ISIS, the Sultan Murad Brigade, and a range of Turkmen jihadi groups that the Turkish government is continuing to utilize uh, within Syria. Now obviously they're doing this under the auspice of battling the PYD, which they uh, call a terrorist organization. The Turkish government's claim is that the YPG and the YPJ are terrorists and thus they are justified in carrying out these invasions of Syria or Rojava. Uh, but if you look at the invasion that took place in 2018, the Turkish army, basically with assistance by various jihadi groups, Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra, uh, the first thing that they did when they conquered the city of Efrin is they tore down the statue of Kawa the blacksmith. Those who are familiar with the uh, Kurdish story of Neyroz know that the Kawa the blacksmith is a, is a central figure in um, uh, Iranian but also Kurdish mythology of the Kurdish New Year. This was deliberate. It was an immediate uh, display that uh, Turkey was going to attempt to annex northwestern Syria, which is what is occurring right now. The Turkish government all the way from Efrin, which they now occupy, all the way to Jarablis, are basically <laughs> taking over this part of Syria. I believe it's also the Turkish government's intent to take over Idlib as well and annex this region in the same way that they did northern Cyprus. For anybody who thinks that the Turkish government is ever going to leave northern Syria, I would remind them to look at the island of Cyprus. I, it is my argument that the Erdogan regime intends never to leave northwestern Syria, that they are in, they're putting in place a permanent occupation. You can see this. They are renaming the street names in Efrin, giving them Turkish names. Children are being taught Turkish in schools. The Grey Wolf fascist organization from Turkey is being brought in, the paramilitary groups. Um, They've uprooted thousands of olive trees, as he spoke about, and they've even brought these trees to Turkey. They're now selling this olive oil all throughout Europe. Um, and I, you see that this is a deliberate ethnic cleansing. All through Efrin now, you see the uh, Turkish flag <laughs> pretty much everywhere with the so-called FSA flag. But everyone knows that this is just a farce. It's basically the Turkish government uh, 
which has annexed this area. As a global conflict analyst, to me, what's so disheartening is the fact that northern Syria has become a region for many of the world's powers, and, all, and the Syrians and the Kurds of Syria almost have nothing to do with the, the situation anymore. Especially in Afrin. Yeah, especially in Afrin, but even, even throughout the region. What you have is you have basically three blocks that have emerged. You have the Turkish regime in Turkey, but then they're also assisted by uh, you know, finances from, from Qatar, the Central Asian Turkic states, Azerbaijan, these other groups who have sort of grouped up with a, a range of jihadi factions. Then you have the SDF or the PYD with the YPG and the YPJ, and then other states now have started to uh, give them uh, support or at least voice support for them, like the, the UAE, Egypt, uh, obviously the United States and NATO and the global coalition against ISIS. And then, in, and then you have the uh, Assad government and Iran, Russia, uh, Hezbollah from Lebanon, and you know you have all of these parties who are are uh, part of this conflict. But when they had the meeting in Astana, it was just the Erdogan regime of Turkey, Iran, and Russia. The Assad regime wasn't present, and the PYD wasn't present, who controls northeastern Syria, and and uh, the Assad government uh, was not invited either. So. Why aren't Syrians being invited to discuss the situation within Syria? It's become sort of this playground for various proxies, uh, jihadist groups who have uh, wreaked havoc on this region. And the ones who are suffering are the Syrian people uh, in, in, and the Kurdish people who are being targeted by uh, Erdogan's regime. Lastly, I would say that what Erdogan is really threatened by is uh, obviously that the PYD is a uh, you know heavily Kurdish movement but he's also he also fears that the democratic confederalism ideology of the PYD and he's trying to use it he's trying to use invasions within Turkey to distract from his own economic failures within the Turkish state there's rising uh, inflation within Turkey and Erdogan every time there's an, an election is coming up as another one is now Erdogan basically goes out and threatens to invade uh, <coughs> Syria to rise uh, to uh, arise sentiment with, uh, between the the, the AKP and the and the MHP party within Turkey, and he uses this to sort of um, get votes. I believe that with the upcoming election coming, it's possible that the Turkish government will launch an invasion. Actually, if I had to guess, I would say it will probably occur around the city of Manbij or Tel Abid, or possibly both of them simultaneously. It's important that the international community work now to prevent this. If the Turkish government is allowed to invade Tel Abid or Manbij, it will create a gigantic disaster in the same way that it did in the city of Efrin. Uh, people will be displaced, there will be ethnic cleansing, uh, and you know the PYD right now holds about a thousand pr ISIS prisoners who I'm sure the Turkish government would love to have released on, uh, you know, under their supervision. So uh, what I would end with is the fact that you know, the Syrian people deserve to live in peace in Syria. Kurdish people deserve to live in peace with Syria. And right now, the primary actor who's preventing this is the Turkish government, the Erdogan regime, and his various uh, jihadi fighters that he's implementing. Thank you. Thank you.